The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar, which is uh, on drawings in Toon Boom in uh, Toon Boom Harmony Premium. Uh, today, I am joined by Tony Ross and Chris Cartledge, who are going to show you some tips for drawing. This is Caitlin. I work at Toon Boom, and uh, Chris is an expert illustrator and a commercial artist with over twenty years under his belt and he's also the artist owner of rivalart.com he has created artwork for high schools and universities for sports teams and pretty much every kind of business you can imagine and his work can be found all over the world including on tv and tony you may already know he is a very good friend of toon boom and an expert teacher as well he is obviously very well versed in harmony he has over a decade of experience teaching at post-secondary institutions, as well as through TonyTeach.com, which if you haven't gone to, make sure you check it out, and BigBlockBooks.com. So he and Chris have been working together on different projects for around five years, and so we're very happy to have them presenting together today. So Chris and Tony today are going to step you through how things work in production when it comes to drawing, from creating rough drawings to going to the clean version, what goes into creating animated characters, using uh, tricks like substitutions, color matching, line matching, color palettes, all sorts of things, brushes, and uh, also how to work with different kinds of uh, drawings, whether they're vector or bitmap. And they're going to work together in tandem to make sure that uh, you know, they cover all these different aspects of illustration, working in harmony, and I'm sure they're going to have a lot of great tips for you. Um, there will be time for questions at the end, as usual. And so to ask them, please use the question box on the right. Uh, I will keep track of them. And when I can answer them, uh, if they're just easy questions, I will. And we'll save the, the, the ones for Tony and Chris for the end of the presentation, which will be about 45 minutes in. Um, if we do happen to run out of time to answer all your questions, please send them to webinars at toonboom.com. I will be sure to make sure that we get answers to you. Um, and if those questions are specifically for Tony and Chris, I'm, they've already said that they're very happy to uh, take them on and I'll send them to them so that we can get you the, the information you're looking for. Um, we're also recording this webinar as usual. So we will post it on our toonboom.com slash webinars site in the very near future, probably Monday. Um, and so with that, I'm going to hand it over to Tony to kick it off. Thanks, Caitlin. I appreciate that. And uh... Awesome, awesome intro. Um, just because we're I, just a technical quick question. Um, did you already hit the record button? Uh, I believe I did. Let me go check. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it's recording. Okay, great. Because I know it's because on my because we're since we're all prisoners and I didn't want to. I was like, mine, mine is blank. I was like, I didn't want to try to record if you'd already recorded. It, so. It's anyway. It's recording. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Um, so I'm going to uh, jump over to. Uh, Harmony Premium, and to let you all know uh, uh, where Chris and I started, uh, we met because Chris actually had uh, contracted me to teach him. Uh, he wanted to learn how to animate and wanted to learn Toon Boom, and so I started working with him. And slowly but surely, I, I would uh, do my really ugly drawings, and Chris would go, "You know, I I could draw that for you." <laughs> so I was like, "Okay, fine. Tell me I can't draw." Um, so what I want to start off showing is uh, one of the pipelines that we do a lot of times. I'll draw something uh, pretty rough out. So I'm going to come here in Premium. I'm going to go ahead and add a new layer. I'm just going to draw over this for a second. And I'm going to call this my rough. <clears throat> so I do add and start. Uh, so typically, uh, one of the tricks we'll do is I will either draw out my rough sketch. The color I'm using, this is just uh, what I like. I think Chris has his own favorite little sketch blue. Um, it's a darkened blue, but I've also dropped the alpha uh, or the transparency. And I will come in and start roughing out uh, this character. And the idea is that I had this idea in my head, and I'm like, okay, Chris, this is, uh, I kind of want him to look like this, you know? And 
Smack fork in his nose. And then I say no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and, I, and I'm adding the mustache. I should, I should have it's like a big John Travolta dimple on this chin. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, I'm going to rough out stuff. I liked um, it better when it was a soul patch, but that's fine. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll see. Um, so yeah, and by the way, and, and thanks to the joy of the interwebs, I'm I'm in Atlanta. Chris is in where are you? Um, Clemson, South Carolina. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, I was like it's, it's it's one of those Carolinas. Um, but yeah, we we worked uh, together for a while before we even actually met in person. So um, so this would be what I would send. Um, so I can either sketch this out on one layer or uh, what I did uh, with the somewhere and this is working in um, this is working in Harmony Premium, so you actually have your art layers. So if I go to the drawing mode for a moment, let's see, I'm going to turn off this other guy. Um, so in the drawing layer, um, in the drawing mode, you can actually see I drew the sketch out in the underlay layer. And so when Chris gets it, he can come into the line art layer and start cleaning that up. Now, you can actually see the line art and underlay in the camera view. Um, another thing that we will do um, is I'm going to grab my select tool and I'm going to come over here to my tool properties. I'm going to expand this for a minute and May I grab ask you this little red. Go ahead. Sorry, Tony. Uh, just a quick question as you go along. Are you guys, uh -huh. you want to tell them what equipment you're using? Are you using mouse, sketchpad, Cintiq? Oh, very good. <clears throat> I am actually using a, um, I'm using a Wacom Intuos 5. Um, this is not a Cintiq. Uh, Chris, if I'm knowing him, he's probably using like a 40-inch Cintiq or something. So, I am using the large HD Wacom Cintiq that I can lay across while I'm working, yes. <laughs> I highly so, yeah, recommend Chris's the pen. Yeah, the pen is great. If you're going to do a lot of drawing, you got to have a, a pen, uh, especially if you want to do variable line widths and that type of thing, uh, that with pressure sensitivities and angles and all that. Uh, so I highly recommend a, a Cintiq, uh, or at least not a Cintiq in particular, but a, a pen. So right. that working with those um, features. Yeah, working with the stylus, it's uh, I it's you the speed you can work. Um, it's a lot better, and again, yes, you do have that um, working with the ability of, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, working with the um, pressure sensitivity and everything. So the idea with this little guy here, um, if I click on this little red arrow, it basically says select um, everything that's in that particular color. So this kind of works out, um, especially if I were... If I were going to try to do a cleanup here, I would come in, well, one, get my regular brush there, deselect. Um, I would come in and start kind of drawing out, yes, this is what it's supposed to be. Now, this is why I have Chris, because I don't clean up that well. And then again, <laughs> so, you're, on the, you're on the line art layer now. You're not on the, uh, the underlay. Right, I know. So, yeah. Right. That's yeah. if, if I'm doing right. So and then uh, switching between camera and drawing mode is is uh, also something that I would do a lot because sometimes my eye gets tired in drawing mode because of the white, and I'd like to in 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 drawing mode it only allows you if you're like working on the hand for example it kind of whites out all the other layers so you don't see them so but if you go to right. camera mode then you can kind of see the the bird's eye view of your your drawing while you're drawing the hand for example and you can see how it interacts with the character. Sorry, I think one of the um, no problem. Um, excuse me, you and you brought up a very good point. Is uh, if I'm working on this, I can go ahead and turn on uh, my light table, and that is that's going to basically show if I have anything on a lower layer. Let me go here for a second. Um, so if I selected the Bob Ruff, I have the light table on, so I can still see the other layers that I was drawing on. It's kind of softened out. So it's not like the, it's kind of like onion skin, but it's not about frames. It's like you're actually looking through layers and 
if I'm on this layer, it's saying, yes, I can concentrate on this layer. Let's say if I was going to do the nose on a separate layer. So if I go there, there are the eyes. There. Um, one thing I also want to talk about is I'm constantly changing uh, my line weight. So I'm just simply holding down my O key and clicking and dragging. Um, my preference is set to, uh, let's see, Harmony Preferences. If you're on a PC, you'd be under Edit Preferences. Um, and I think I have the brush size cursor set up. Um, this is under the Drawing tab and Cursor. I think Chris uses, um, you're using the crosshair so it's more exact. Yes. Mm -hmm. so. <clears throat> Um, one last thing I want to show before I want to, I'm going to kick this over to Chris's screen. Um, I'm going to show one of the really cool uh, features here. Uh, let's just go add and close. Thank you. I'm going to solo this layer. And I'm just using my brush tool. The weird thing about uh, using a brush tool and uh, why I think a lot of people initially like uh, the pencil tool, especially when working on character design, is this is a fill. So you've actually got, if you try to alter it, you've just got the outer anchor points and paths. Um, but cool part is we now have the center line editor. So even though this is a fill, it's, um, you can start actually working with it almost like it's a, um, a pencil line there. So it's kind of cool. And we've been playing around with this lately, especially with um, some of the projects we're working with, because it, it makes me personally. I almost always like working with the brush uh, than than the uh, pencil. As a as an illustrator, you know, especially drawing um, uh, the way I do, I'm used to Control Z so much. So if I'm swiping a line and I don't like it. I usually just hit Control Z and draw it again, real quick. You know, um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the patience to, uh, or the time to be able to go and edit the lines like that. But that's a fantastic feature if you if you're really good again and 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 tweak, you know, the brow or something that's just not correct. You don't want to redraw that whole line. Exactly. All right. So I am getting ready to uh, jump you uh, jump over and. Um, Bring you, uh, you can go ahead and finish up Bob the Dude here. Okay. Bob is a recurring name that I use. <laughs> so, um, where is that guy? Okay, there. I'm going to make sure I'm clicking on the right one. Let's see. Put his intro. This is something that Tony does a lot. He'll send me. Um, you want me to show my screen now? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Maybe hide that. There we go. Can you see? Yes, I can. All right, excellent. Well, this is the file that uh, Tony sent me that you just saw, and it was about like that. So the first thing I did, uh, Tony's right, I don't like that sketch blue. I like mine to be a little about right there. So, but um. I know that's hard to see, but that's usually how I start out. Really, really rough, and uh, and I'll just get the shape. Let me widen out my pencil here. I hit O there and move my pen, so change my diameter. So I just I make sure I get a really good shape and a good feel. So when you look at it, it just it just feels good and natural, you know. Um, and I, I'm not going to talk about drawing too much. Uh, a lot of you guys can draw very well I'm sure and you got uh, all types of people to teach drawing lessons about a good a good drawing but um, in Toon Boom this is this is how I, I work so I would create a good shape like that and I'm on the underlay that's good and then I have two sketch colors sometimes and then I'll go a little darker um, let's see I can go Let's go on the line area just for the sake. And then I would add more detail with my darker color. You can see my little wiggles there. We can change that. That's because I'm nervous. So I'm going to increase my <laughs> smoothing. And then you won't see the wiggle so much. How about that? Uh, so that's what that line is. So if you're trying to draw a real detailed line um, and it's you know, and it's smoothing out for you too much, that's, you know, you may want to adjust your smoothing. 
So normally I keep it on zero, but because y'all got you guys are watching me, I'll move it up a little bit. So no one's watching you. Okay, that's <laughs> no right. one cares. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I do more detail with the slightly charcoal. So I'll go in again and uh, create. And you know when you when I draw this when I ink it, uh, you know I'll be going straight through that nose there because that the the head's going to be a foundation in itself. It's going to be it's going to be the uh, the foundation of the face and the features of the face because the eyes and the mouth they're all going to be on different layers, but they'll all be setting setting on top of the head. Um, so this head shape will actually be. By so I get that going, and I'd actually reduce this because if I want to draw his whole body on here like that, <clears throat> and to delete that underlay layer, right? You double click on this, mm -hmm. and you go to the window here, and it says underlay. Yeah, you go into your uh, yeah your drawings. So. Also, yeah. also, yeah, that's, and that's yeah. So it's, and the cool part about that, it's not deleted. It's just um, you're just making sure it's not. Um, it's not visible anymore. Right. Okay. Um, I just deleted it, by the way. <clears throat> <laughs> so um, now here's here's a here's a fun fact. So normally the 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 back and forth between Chris and I when we're working on a production, um, I like a really nice rough, uh, smooth uh, or, or, or a rough kind of uh, edgy kind of uh, animation or a character. So I'll send it. I'll send my rough over to Chris. And Chris goes, um, Here, here's the character after he came back from rehab. And I'm like, no, I need him a little more rough around the edges. Uh, yeah. So we keep going back and forth. I go, for, so I say all that to say, uh, Chris got rid of his perm. And I'm like, dude, he, he had a perm. And yeah. he had this big, big curly go. hair. Thank well, you. I'm still, I'm still in the sketch phase, though, you know. So okay, when well. I go to, go to the line <laughs> art, I'll, I'll add even more detail, you know. So and, and in this stage, and, and you're thinking about when I'm doing this, and, and the client Tony may have certain uh, specifics on how uh, the these the assets are going to connect. So the arms, I mean, you can do a you know a seamless connect where it's just the color uh, going into the shirt, or you can have outlines, uh, and you can just plop those the hands directly on top. Uh, so without the line, and Tony knows tricks to hide lines and stuff, which is really cool. Uh, but I'll show you how I, my theory on drawing these really fast, and then I'll have her, the bottom will go down and say his pants might be blue, and then let's give him some little legs, maybe some big feet, like that. One of the other things that we do um, when designing this, um, we may um, we have to figure out um, the argument I always have is. Is it going to be a, is this a, are we doing this for a hamburger client or is it a steak client? Um, <laughs> meaning, <laughs> meaning um, how large is the budget? What's the budget? What's the turnaround for the project? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So uh, we will have, uh, it's like, yeah, we got to get this turned around. And by the way, we, we might have pizza money after, by the time this is done. So it's like, okay, we're, we're designing the character with that in mind. Um, I think also if you're do, doing things like if you know that the character is going to be uh, running on a rooftop and it's a, a wide shot, do you need to have um, mouth replacements and, and drawing substitutions for the eyes at that point? Probably not. You can probably get, you can get away with a solid head. Mm -hmm. But these are the, the things we think about while, uh, while working. I have a uh, preliminary client uh, sheet when someone contacts me and needs um, – a character drawn. That's mostly what I do is I create characters in Harmony and I, I build all the, the layers for them and then Tony would either rig it or I'd pass it on to uh, say the gaming studio who will drop it in and they'll put it in um, in the scenes and they'll and animators will animate, uh, animate the character and uh, what will happen is they will send you a scene and there will be an area where maybe the character doesn't work or, you know, there's some uh, tan uh, some bad tangents going, some splicing. And you'll have to fix those uh, or provide them another substitution. Um, but I have a preliminary um, client sheet where I try to get as much information as I can up front 
And one of those being a Hamburg client or a state client, you know, whether I'm creating the character or they're creating the character. If it's their character that I'm building, uh, you know, I don't charge as much because it's their, their, you know, that's their um, intellectual property. But if I'm creating the character, um, then you need to go back to the discussion board as to how much you're getting paid because uh, it could be. Uh, a, a lot more money out of your pocket if they're using your intellectual property. Uh, but anyway, that's, you can ask me that in an email if you want. And I'll talk to you more about that. So here, here's a little trick. I'm just going to draw that real quick. I use the cutter a lot, so I'm sure. Oops. Uh, oh, okay, it's got the sketch underneath it um, to clean up lines like that. But if I'm drawing this on. Um, several layers what i'll go ahead and do i'll show you this about color palettes while i'm doing it i go to red and i want to make a new color and I always make sure i label all my colors and the ones i'm using I always drag up top and i usually do my sketch colors and then black white and then i start going down through uh, the most used colors but I always label them because uh, the client you give this to is going to uh, want it labeled and the more you can do for them uh, the better they will uh, more than likely come back and use you. Even if they're not happy about one thing, they'll go, yeah, but he labels everything. <laughs> Great, let's use them again. Uh, so I, I use the paint bucket here. Oh, wait a minute, let me get through it. So I have the sketch and I've grouped the sketch. So that way I can just click on one item. If you do not group the sketch, then you'll have to go in and select all those colors the way Tony originally told you to, but I just group them so I can move it out of the way. Uh, boom. And then I like your color is flesh, and let's go ahead and do another color. And uh, <clears throat> I'm a sucker for a uh, god. Sorry, there's two. There's two. I have two uh, theories when I when I approach or uh, approaches when I come to drawing a character. And one is you can build them all on one layer and then copy and paste into all the other, you know, his right arm, his left arm, his body, you know, and just and, and um, cut and paste and then uh, X out the delete things you don't need. And so you kind of build it that way. I do that on really simple characters like this one might be a good candidate for that. Um, uh, but so you know, what I would it's easier to do and you make less mistakes is when you go ahead and build it when you when you need the when you need the element uh oh color card there we go sorry and I'm going to build a drawing layer and I'm going to go ahead and label it his nose and I, I'll go ahead and add and close if you click add it'll keep the window up there and you can keep um, creating layers, which is fine and good if you want to go ahead and do that. But boom, and then his nose. Sometimes you can, I, I can do this two different ways. So let's take a look at the nose real quick by itself. If you hit this dot, it'll single, single it out. So now I want to go to the paint bucket and I want to go to the stroke tool and I can draw a line like that. And it's asking me if I want to see it. So if I hit K, I can see where I drew that line, or I can turn it off. And now I'll go to the paint bucket, and I can boop, fill his nose up. So there, it's a neat little trick. And I'll do that a lot. Say if I wanted to add, um, you know, a shadow on his face, for example, you can do that two ways. Um, if you start adding a lot of color, uh, you'll find that your color palette will start getting pretty large so you can either do that two ways. You can go here and see how this works. Maybe go black, go down to about 30% and go to this line here. And you can fill in. You can do it one by drawing directly on it and create that shadow like this which is nice, but if say, if that was on like a gradient or a white, sometimes the, the saturation won't fit the design very well. So you actually have to go in and create another flesh tone. So this is how I set up my colors. I'll go here and I'll go boom, 
create a new color and I'll put it underneath and I'll call it flesh D for dark and then I'll create another and I'll and I keep them all together so and I'll call it flesh L for light and here I'll click on it and and I'll lighten up that color not like that hold on <clears throat> I grab my picker. Okay, thank you. You, are, you okay? So you use the multi the multi color. Can you go to single color for a second? Can you remember single. For a second? There we um, go. And go to hue. There. Actually, to, you click on the S actually. The where? I know of the V actually. Sorry. V. Yep. There. Okay. <clears throat> So I like, um, I'm normally, now Chris normally uses the multicolor wheel. I'm normally in single color. So I can kind of jump around and pick my colors using the um, the hue, saturation, or the uh, value um, radio buttons. There is no uh, hexadecimal um, uh, little call outs, uh, which took me a while to get used to, but uh, I like the ability to go in and just kind of grab those really quick. <clears throat> So I have my light color, and then when you get it on there, you know, you may see that it's not quite the right saturation. You can adjust it a little bit when it's on there. But like, uh, now if you do this on the layer, um, say using the the stroke tool, it'll actually fill that. It'll replace that color. It won't. Um, the flesh underneath it uh, will still will disappear so you can't really use right. the the tent you have to so if you, you would have to either do it you know over here and fill it who knows what's getting ready to happen Oops, key <laughs> oh, it's not there anyway and then you would have to copy and paste it and drag it over from a different layer or else you'll replace that paint now um, what another trick that I like to use like with that. the uh, with the uh, black and kind of um, uh, in dropping the opacity is using that on top of the skin colors um, or anything, and it basically makes it look like there's a self-colored line. So instead of you going in and seeing a character that has nothing but uh, black strokes around it, uh, we have the outline. So it makes it look like if the character has red hair, there is a darker red outline. Or if they're wearing purple pants, there's this darker purple outline, um, right. and we do that by having uh, doing our outlines with the um, with the um, uh, alpha black. You can do it like that as well. Draw the darker lines, and then fill it with the flesh. Or if you don't want any lines, you know, you can. The, the outlines will delete, or you can cool. use this tool to draw. Or, in fact, you can go to a pencil and drop it down to zero, no stroke, which is which will essentially do the same thing, you know. And it's boom, like that. So if yeah, you hit cool, K, yeah. you, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Um, the thing, the thing is, if you're actually using the stroke with the uh, paint, the paint tool, you'll get that a little alert. If you set your pencil, um, I think we recently um, set up a pencil where there's um, where there's no um, there's no stroke at all. The you don't get any kind of alerts or alarms on that. I'm going to open up a, another <clears throat> character so I can get to uh, how I do the hands uh, substitutions on the hands, so you guys don't have to. Watch me draw out Bob the Dude. <laughs> you got something against Bob the Dude? He's a great guy. <laughs> Let's see. All right. All right. So here's a Viking I drew this morning uh, for this webinar. And so you want your color palette, and you'll notice your color palette doesn't pop up. Um, but if you want it to, all you got to do is grab your teardropper and just click on on your character and it will pop up. Okay, do me a favor. Click on yeah, your man. timeline. Click timeline. on one of the friends of the timeline. There we go. Boom. Boom. 
Thank you. <laughs> it's like, it's like, okay, there are very few, and 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 if any if any of the engineers are listening, one, <laughs> we love you. Um, <laughs> there, there, there are very few bugs, um, but that is one that I learned um, early on. And so if, you, if you ever see your palette where it's not showing up, click one of the cells of your timeline, um, whether it's empty or not, and then they just pop up. So it's just just letting that know. Again, it's and yes. to, to the software engineers, we love we love the program. Just 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 kind of throwing the plug out there. And usually, <laughs> so. I'm an old school dude too. So uh, you know, if if it's these programs are. are, are you know, I'm I'm getting up in age, so it takes me a while to learn them. They are intuitive for for a younger generation, uh, but they're easy enough for me. Once I use them, I got them. You know, it's it's very intuitive uh, after I've used it a few times. Uh, and I usually go, "What the heck? Where do I click?" And I call Tony, and he goes, "All you gotta do is click here, man." Um, so here I haven't built him. I haven't connected him. Usually I'll parent child a, a lot of these things before I would send them to uh, the client. Um, but this as far as I got this morning. Um, so I always label it um, like the left arm would be the character's left arm, not your left side. Um, so, and then when I get caught up going pretty busy, I'll go and verify that I did the, those correct and those were all labeled correctly. Um, so if you see these leg L E originally it was L leg L and I accidentally had it on the right when I did my quality assurance and went back and checked it. So I just changed it to L E and flip it around. The other thing that I do that's very important, Tony, interrupt me if you want. Um, I will. When I, get, when I get these built, I want to make sure my pivot points are all right. And a quick way to do that is um, I just go to my top one and I click that. And you can see where your pivot points are and you can move them all at once. Make sure you don't have your transform button or your animate button on, but that one's right. Body's right. Leg, arm. Right, arm, right, leg, yeah. So I just make sure all my uh, pivot points are are set before I send them to the client as well. All right. Now one of the one of the other things that um and we've started doing this recently and because uh, someone someone had to correct me. Um, my main background is teaching. It's not necessarily being in a studio. So one of the things I had to get corrected on was I was constantly doing left and right. So one of the things we started to adapt uh, with. Uh, Tony Teach is making sure that we are setting it to front and back versus left and right because you can um you can always uh, flip things. For instance, uh, you're on the transform tool right now, right? I am. Yes. Um, do you remember if you have the helmet selected? Press the number. Uh, press the number four, please. He flipped. Okay. Yeah, that's 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 the whole thing. It's like you can flip that back and forth. Press the number five. Number five. Oh, nice. Yeah, flips the other way. <clears throat> so you have horizontal flipping and, and, and vertical flipping. And this is why you only would need, when you're designing your character, you typically uh, would do like a front three quarter and then your side um, instead of doing um, all the way around. And this, right. this, if you have like the character that's kind of, um, symmetrical if it's asymmetrical for instance like the helmet here um there's certain things you would do in addition to right. that or if you had a sword in one hand you would have to build yes. different substitutions for you know like for these legs uh and these arms I, all i did was you know i created the another layer for it and then you right click and then you hit transform and uh, right. flip, and then i bring it over so um, so I drew on these these only once. The highlights are a little wrong. You can see that these are flipped now, but those are little details I'll fix later. And like Tony said, when you I'll, I'll draw the complete front view first. Uh, and this is when your character is done. Now, I, you know, if, if I'm creating a character for a client, I'm drawing uh, front profile, quarter back, um, quarter front, quarter. Um, back and then back. So I've, I've got all those drawings that I'm going to send the client and then the client's going to okay that. Then I draw the front view first and then I would uh, get that okayed. And one, once I got that done, um, I would work on the other uh, angles and I would bring it in and, you know, I would use my sketch tool and I would, and I would build all my guidelines, you know, like this. Um, when you're using building your guidelines 
you'll find that if you hold the shift down, you can get a thin line, but if you use pressure point and make a big fat line, so if you're trying to get a thin line, just use a light pressure. You don't necessarily have to change your pin size. Um, and I want to say um, a, a little bit, a little bit of. Uh, let me let me embarrass Chris for a moment. I know when I first uh, started working with him, everything he kept going. Well, I'll just draw it in Illustrator and then bring it in. It's like Chris just draw the program. It's very, it's very powerful. And That's true. Watch <laughs> watching Chris, watching Chris draw this character out today in 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 harmony. It's just like I'm so proud of you. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I want to um, I want to talk about uh, really quick. Uh, there is something we're playing around with, uh, just the power of what's in harmony. Uh, Chris, can you solo the helmet and the head layers? Yes. Oh. You want the eyes and stuff? Well, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Okay. Um, go ahead to your transform tool, please. <clears throat> now, this is something that um, and you're gonna we're gonna remove the helmet, remove the helmet. <laughs> Kind of scroll down a little bit, I guess, sir. You want me to uh, remove it? Yeah. Like like click on the user. No, just you grab the transform. Remove it. Yes. No, I want you to lift it straight up. He's bald headed. He's bald headed. But yeah, this is uh something we we're playing around with, uh, with the uh the different art layers. There and we're not going to show this in the, in the note because we're, we we try to make sure that we're not going to say, "Hey, this is how we set this up." But you can actually control the art layer. So I think we have line art, the, the front of the helmet and everything. That's that's on the line art layer, and then the back of the helmet, that little gradient fill, is on the color art layer, and so. By setting it up in your node view, you can have it where the front of the helmet moves in front of the head, and the back of the helmet, that gradient aspect, uh, goes behind it, even though uh, this is just on one layer. And it's kind of a cool effect. Um, so you're not having flat artwork. And the the beauty of doing something like this with a with your cutouts is it gives the illusion as if you've drawn a lot more than you have. But uh, these elements are pretty, pretty cool and interactive that way. And doing that also helps the shears and tangents. It helps eliminate some of those. So uh, it helps protect. You know, if I had a mountain scene and behind my timid Viking here, you would, uh, you wouldn't see through his helmet, or just it would look a little more natural. You know, the viewer may or may not even notice it, but uh, the people doing the animating, they, they may. Just one of those things about being thorough. Um, I'm going to take a look at the hand real quick. How we're doing on time? We're good. I think we're good, actually. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, like, if I'm uh, making sure I'm on the right hand here. So I created um, this hand. Let me go here. Make sure I'm on the right one. Right. Let me go to my library. These are where my substitutions are going. So there's this fist. Get rid of my guidelines. Thank you very much. And then there's this hand. So if I wanted to uh, create another hand, I would. I, I what I did is I grab all uh, all my layers and I increase my uh, frames to ten. Uh, if I was doing a bunch of subs, I'd, I would increase it all the way out to you know, 20 if I was having 20 subs, or if you're doing mouth substitutions for talking, for example, I'd make sure that I extended, you know, my time timeline, and I hit F5, and I extend my exposure to say, I'll just say 30. So uh, that way I can, uh, I, I like to do them all in a line. Sounds like the guy from Guardian of the Galaxy. I like to put them all on a line on my dashboard so I can look at them. <laughs> anyway, that's kind of true. I like that. <laughs> I like to look at them all. Um, all right, here we go. So if I'm going to draw another uh, substitution, say I'm going to draw an angry fist, um, I can go to drawing mode, I guess. Is, is there a happy fist? You just got an angry there, fist. Yeah, there's casual fist, happy fist, tense <laughs> fist. Relaxed fist. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Sun kissed. Uh, all right. So you can do one of two, two things. Uh, one, you can right click in this time frame here and and go to drawings you can either create a empty drawing which will get rid of the whole thing or you can duplicate drawing duplicate drawing and so 
since I'm only changing the fist here, I would duplicate the drawing. And uh, that way I don't have to redraw um, his bracelets and his uh, bracer. Sorry, I have a bracelet. No wonder he's a timid Viking. His, uh, <laughs> his bracer and his arm will be the same, and so I won't get any strange, uh, any strange uh, changes. Now, technically, <clears throat> technically, if we're going, if we're, if the this would pro this would definitely almost end up being a uh, what's that word? This would kind of almost be a hamburger client because we are or, or maybe a, a one off because the arm he's actually drawing up the arm as well as the hand together. Typically, yes. will the um, that arm would have probably ended at the bracelet, and then we'd have the hand as a separate layer. Sure. Uh, but these are these are things that we have to think about. Like I think I think um, there is a pool. There is a I'll say political client. I, I won't say anything other than that. But um, there's a client that we work with where it's like the but the time the turnaround time is really quick and the budget is very very tight. So we'll build the entire legs, feet, and torso and neck. <laughs> it's, it's one shape, and we just put a curve deformer on it, um, and then go in and say, okay, yes, here are the arms. It's just a straight arm, and we'll add a curve deformer on the arms, and like, okay, we're done. <laughs> and, so, and so we're not doing anything complex. Meanwhile, if we're trying to do a, a web series, there are things you have to think about um, in the design stage of this when you're when you're creating it, um, so you don't have to come back and redo things later. Um, the beauty of doing cutout animation is, in theory, you've drawn it out once, um, and then you can reuse it. So, a lot of the, a lot of times we we may have characters uh, like the pepper rig that we have. Um, it's only one. It's just a, a three quarter view. It's not even a turnaround, um, but the latest stuff we're doing, we're actually doing like full turnaround, so we can actually uh, do a series of the of things versus uh, the one off like this arm might be. Right, <clears throat> and one of the, and this is from a painting background. Uh, when I was showing Tony what, how I was drawing this stuff, so I have this highlight here. Um, one of the quick ways that I do that um, is I'll just take my pen and just draw where I want the highlight. For example, I'll do it exaggerated, and but so that's a pretty ugly line, and that's not the way I want it to look. So I would just keep my pen tool, and I'd come back with the skin color, and I would just make it a little more natural and interesting, you know. And I would tighten up those lines. Now, um, the funny part about that, if you want to hit the sorry. press the letter K. Okay. Yes. There. Okay. Um, or actually, let's say uh, the 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 already the welded it. You already, well, you, you, seriously, um, <laughs> one of the funny things, because Chris, yes, he is a painter. He has some awesome, like, not just digital, but uh, painting in the real world with, like, mud and everything. It's awesome. Uh, but, but you get Chris's work, and it's like, and I'm trying to select this, the, uh, the skin color, and it's like, how many strokes are in this? And so I have to, um, I'll select everything. Um, and then, uh, matter of fact, if you can do that real quick, I'll show try where, the, uh, where, where draw optimize uh, or I'm drawing optimize flatten is. Draw, optimize, drawing. and then flatten. flatten. Alt flatten. shift for PC. Alt shift F. Option shift F on uh, Mac, and so that would actually flatten everything down versus having the the. the Really beautiful. I mean, I'm sure if it was an oil, it would, we'd see the, it's these incredible textures. But in vector, it's like, dude, his wrist is flashing. <laughs> He's got a flashlight. Yeah, I got my onion skin on, so I could see the uh, the other uh, the other fist. Coolness. I lost it. Oh, there it is. There it is. Anyway, so that's how I do my substitutions. Um, and then I would even go so far as, I guess I can show you, uh, like blurs. You, you were saying something, Tony? Yep. Um, you, are you getting ready to do your smear or something? Yeah, I was going to show different ways to do a smear or a smear okay. or blur or whatever you want to call them. Can you uh, do it in, can you, um, or we are coming up on our, I want to make sure we have the Q&A time. Hey, Caitlin, sure. how, are we, how are we on questions? Are we good? Are we are we full or not full or 
We have a few. I think if we stop at say like let's give it four more minutes, then we can go okay. through them. I would say, yeah, go for a few cool. minutes. Yep. So cool. I went. I went to my. Uh, I'm gonna do this real quick. I went to my uh, paint box and I grabbed my no stroke, and then I'm gonna go to my color here, um, and let's create a new color. Um, we'll go from I guess white here, and I'll double click on it. I'll call this my blur G and I'll double click on it and oh thank you and I'll click gradient um, this is white and to nothing to clear that way um, so it'll go from white let's do it to skin so um, let me do that what you want to click and click and drag over I want to do I want that to be clear Okay. Um, that one. No, no. Go to your. Uh, go to your alpha. Drag it down. There it is. There. Oh, it changed but my other color. Right. Yeah. Hang on. Let me go to my blur G. Your correct one. <laughs> yes. Thank you. There you go. And now, this one is my skin. Do 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 do. do, do. And then that should be clear, right? Right there. Yeah, both. I think you have both of them there on alpha. That's what. That's what it is. Boom. There we go. Thank you. Okay. And um, I would fill that blur like that, but uh, it's incorrect. So I got to go to my contour editor, and this is where you edit all your lines and your gradient and your texture. And I'll select it, and this is where you can change it to go how you want to. Boom. Yeah. And that gives a good and again, blur. Uh, Sorry, go ahead. No problem. And again, that's coming in. Um, you go to your contour editor, and it's our album. The edit gradient textures are right at the base there. That's not bad. There, like that. And if you want to go into further detail, you know, you can... You know, do things like, uh, you know, do that, little things. And then you can put another one on, another blur on the uh, brace, for example. Um, anyway, and you would save that as a, another substitution. Mm -hmm. um, now, like Chris you. is, um, go ahead, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Chris is saying blur, but another, another um, way of doing this, especially if we, I think we did this when we were doing the, uh, the animating the music, um, it's doing um, a smear. Um, and these are pop, definitely popular with, um, like, uh, Warner Brothers cartoons and things like that. You're just kind of giving, giving the illusion of quick movement. Like, that mm -hmm. looked, that actually looked like it moved a second ago. That's kind of cool. <laughs> like, the, uh, um, uh, uh, one other thing is, is you, may, you may draw this character, and then uh, your client will say, well, that doesn't match our color palette. You'd like to get that color palette up front. Um, and I do have a sample of a color palette um, images. I'm going to browse, and I'm going to go into <coughs> Doom Boom Webinar, and there's my color palette. Okay, so here's a color palette that let me move it out of the way. Where's that one from? All right. This one was from uh, a comic, a uh, 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 moving comic book. What do you call those? A um, uh, motion comic. Yeah, motion comic uh, about a historical uh, on George Washington. So I was doing some drawing for that, and this was their color palette for it. So they, this color palette is, palette is pretty large because that was a painted, um, that was a painted. Uh, comic uh, but assuming that you would have a more limited color palette if you came in and had to change your colors so uh, it, it'd be pretty easy so you just take your flesh and and you know you can change them all that way right Tony if you hit that double click double click on that one double click um, take your dry your eyedropper and drag it yeah your drag it. yeah okay. like click that and drag there, boom, it changes that whole color. So you would have to tweak the highlights and the lowlights and whatnot, but. Um, yeah, dude needs to get some sun. 
He does, yeah. He, well, he's Scandinavian, so there's not a lot of sun there. Point taken. And then boom, you know, like that. And you actually can leave that window open, but um, you don't need to close it every time. So, you know, let's go a little darker like that. See if we can see all of it. And then you click on, say, maybe his hair and do that. So you can change all the colors uh, real quickly and simply just by opening up their palette like this. And this was done in Photoshop, and uh, they just squared it out, put all their colors on it, and emailed it to me. And then you can just go through all your colors. Um, I would do one at a time rather than jump around because you'll get lost. But uh, right. anyway, that's how I do that. It's a good, quick trick. Now, me, me personally, the, um, the trick that I'm always doing, I always steal colors from uh, public domain comics because I think the colors are a lot more rich a lot uh, richer, but if you see like your favorite Bugs Bunny cartoon, Flintstones, whatever, or even uh, contemporary uh, uh, Simpsons or Family Guy, imagine uh, grabbing the JPEG of that and going in and sampling the color that way. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. I think we are to a question point. So. Yes, Chris, great. Chris, that was you great. Can keep working if you have <clears throat> yeah, so so I'm just going to go through them. We have quite a few, but um, let's thank you. First of all, thank you very much. That was great to see how you draw and to see the little tricks. And, and I have to say with the color palace, it's a nice, quick, quick way of swapping out your colors. Um, okay, so one of the first questions that came in is, if you did use multi-layers for your cleanup, would you flatten the image before sending it back? And it sounds like you, you sort of address that at one point, but maybe you could talk a bit more about if you would flatten them and why i would get rid of the the sketch yes i, I my sketches are pretty rough but I, I don't even think my client can really even i guess i could send them the gray sketch but i, I draw the line art and i could send them the line art uh, when i get my characters approved i, I kind of do that and uh even on a sketch pad sitting out somewhere you know and i could take a picture of it and send it goes this your character and then as soon as they the yes, I, and that's when I, I dig into Tomb Boom and and line and put all the detail into it. You know, yeah, I could send yeah. them a screenshot of that or send them the the file, and they can approve it from there. But I, I'd probably I'd probably send them the the black and white line art. I call it line art, but the 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 front view. Uh, that way, the client can see it clearly um, and and not be, interpret you know things that I you know that I didn't intend. You know. And if, and if you were to, let's see, let's see, I think so. Um, um, if you were to, to get Caitlin? a sketch, yes. yes. You're you're breaking up really bad, almost robotic. Oh, oh, so sorry. Can you hear me better now? Is that better? Is that better? Can you hear me better, better, better now? Okay. okay. Um, okay. I'll try. I'll try to speak more slowly. slowly. Uh, uh, if you were to get a sketch on paper from a client. Is it possible, is it possible to, scan to scan it and have it in Tomb Boom as, as a, a template draw to draw from? from. Um, Chris, could you hear that, or did you? Hear it was that? it was it was broken up, but uh, yes, I, uh, like this. If you guys can still see my screen, yes, you see, we see uh, this character here is uh, Jack Diddley, and he was for a video game. And um, what you see here, let me see if I can enlarge it. Um, was from just a. a pen and ink sketch on a piece of paper and then uh, what you see the black li hard line here is actually what I did in Tomb Boom. So uh, originally it sent them this little quick pencil sketch and um, and then I created that in Tomb Boom for them to look uh, to approve it. But my initial concept was that bad sketch. So um, also there's a way you can just simply bring in uh, if you got a sketch but let's say if you, I know for, me, for us sometimes we'll be working with a traditional animator. So they've actually got a light table and they've got all their, all their pages drawn out and they've inked it and they might, they might send that to us. You can import that and with um, Tomb Boom's vector, um, vectorization process, it can go in and do the line work immediately and just even drop out the, the white background. So whether you're starting yes. from sketch or if someone has a cleaned up line thing, you can, you can work from either way. Yes. yes. <clears throat> this yes, is an example. Sorry. 
Oh, that's okay. okay. And, you know, we have we some have of some these topics are also covered, also covered on, on Learn, our, our Learn portal on learn.tuboom.com, so, so, uh, which has uh, a great has search, search function. function. So if you search for templates, um, you can find the topics that cover some of these things. Um, yes. Is my is voice my clear voice now? now? Nope, it's still very robotic. <laughs> oh my goodness, I wonder what happened to my headset. Okay, uh, sorry about that, guys. Um, I will just move to the next question though, because I, I think there's some good ones here. And uh, one of the one of the questions was for Chris: Do you first uh, draw everything first, and then separate the noses and the eyes to layers, or do you draw each piece on a separate layer right from the start? If it's a real easy character like this one here with the red hair, um, yeah, I, I will draw it all on one layer. Uh, but if you're uh, doing something like this, or even this one, which it's kind of hard to tell, but there's a lot of texture going on in her. She's a lot more detailed. Um, I would go ahead and do it on separate later layers because it, it's a pain to cut and paste, and you may lose some stuff. It may not look as you as you intended it to look when you uh, draw it on the same layer and then copy and paste to the other asset layers. Uh, so it really depends on the complexity. Uh, the more complex it is, uh, like if you have a lot of expression in the eyes and the mouth, if your nose is moving a lot, for example, in the expressions, um, then I would put it on, uh, I would go ahead and put it on a different layer um, rather than drawing it on the foundation of the head uh, or the body. And this, I start with the body and the head, and then I build everything off those. Cool. So I do the head, yeah. Yeah, cool. And um, there's another question. I have a feeling we won't get to all of them, but we have a question about uh, explaining the in-betweening process that you use. Like, can you change color lines in onion skin mode? The person who's asking is red-green colorblind, so it's sometimes difficult to see the lines when in in betweening. Um, I, I go yes. ahead, Tony. <laughs> I, 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 it's hard for me to work in red green color mode, and and Tony showed me the um, uh, a, a way to get that to where it's more of a light box. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going. I'm the second one. I'm, I'm going to grab my screen real quick. Sure. Make presenter. Show my screen. Can y'all see my screen? Okay. Yep. I, I see. Okay. Yes. Okay. So let me do something really ugly here real quick. Um, onions. I'm going to say add and close. I'm going to solo this layer. Thank you. Han Solo. Why are we not soloing? There you go. All right, so here's the deal. Um, I'm going to draw out a couple of little things here. Let's turn on the onion skin. Mine, if you notice, I don't have red and green. Um, I'm going to expand, whoops, expand my onion skin here. So mine is not red and green right now. I can go to Harmony Preferences, and I'm going to go to, this is me, of course, getting in this, under Drawing, and this is in Premium. I think it's under, under Drawing and on Premium. My onion skin render, um, default, it says Enable Shade. Okay. Um, enable shade is what is what is what gives you the um, red and green. Okay, so what you can do instead is under preferences, you go here and you would set this to normal. And what normal is going to do, um, and especially this especially looks really good. Um, I don't have a good um, example show right now, but imagine it kind of looking like um, a full color image um, frosted back a little bit. Let's see, wait a minute. You can, um, if you want, if you can have words, if you'd like to ask Ant or start on the next question while this is opening. <clears throat> Go, 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 oh, go, yeah, go. sorry. A uh, quick one. You can share color palettes between right. other people in the team. That's a yes. And yes. Um, you can check that out on learn.portal. Again, there's lots of information there um, for helping you show you how to do that. There is a question about um, 
uh, how do you approach an object that's glowing like eyes or a candle? And I think we'll we'll take that one offline and get back to you for sure because we have only a minute left and we we still have to say goodbye. So. Huh? Um, um. If I can cut back in, yep. this is here's an example of this is onion skin with the shade, um, um, excuse me, with the normal mode turned on versus shade. So you actually see the full colors of that instead of it just being red and green, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, but I do think it it may, if you're working on something really intensive, it can be a little a little more burdening um, on the on your system than just keeping it the uh, the normal little red and greens. Thank you, Tony. Um, okay, guys, I'm sorry to cut this off. Uh, I really want to thank uh, both Chris and Tony very much for the awesome um, demo and presentation. And remember, guys, you can go to learn.tomboom.com to try out Harmony if you don't have it and see some more uh, tips. Um, also, we'll upload this webinar and I'm going to take the questions that are already here and we'll get back to you on them and send any other questions or resend these ones if you like to webinars at toonboom.com so we can get to them. And again, thank you all for attending and thank you, Tony and Chris, for the presentation. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, there's a lot to talk about. If anybody has any questions directly, they feel free to contact through through Tomb Boom or uh, on or myself. So thank you. Yep, through their sites that we mentioned at the beginning of the webinar. Okay. Yes. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.